okay, I think I'll manage rather than wasting time. I'll do that. I'll go ahead. Okay, so um, going to the first point. So I was reading about it, further reading, and I think I came across something very interesting. I mean, at least I found it very interesting. Um, it talks about that our real world, what we, of course, when we think of authentic assessments, we are talking about real world experience. So important thing is that what we think real world, unintentionally think of our personal world, uh, like when we talk about it, we talk about a CEO of a company or uh, we give examples of like, let's say you have just bought a home. That is not maybe your student's current real world. We are talking about our own personal real world. And this is something which we need to really, really be very careful about when we are creating these tasks. So are we being really relevant to children or we are talking about our own real world? That's the first point to begin with. So as I said, giving students their real world experience. Like for a science class, if you're if science class is just studying about health, designing a series of lessons to lead the planning and producing of a school-wide health fair is more relevant to them rather than asking them that they are part of uh, uh, a, a maybe a campaign where they have to um, uh, educate a group of people in a particular country. So I'm not saying that we can't do that, but I think the first step would be making it really relevant to them. Uh, for example, while studying argument in English class, have students developed a proposal to the school board that argues for a change in uniform or cell phone policy. Uh, second thing, rules of engagement. I love this aspect too. So when we talk about rules of engagement in a class, are we really looking at indicators of engagement or we are just thinking of or merely looking at compliance? So in a particular book, John Antonetti talks about eight qualities of engagement. And these eight indicators are personal response, clear expectations, emotional and intellectual safety, learning with others, sense of audience, choice, variety, novelty, differentiation, you can call it, and authenticity. So. I would say this is relevant to any class, but when you're specifically talking about authentic assessment, this is so important that we have created these engagement and we have indicators for these engagement to measure. Are we really measuring the impact of what we have created? And that is relevant through these eight points, which he talks about in his book. So, of course, we all know that instead of asking recall question, move up Bloom's taxonomy, higher order question, which have open ended answer or multiple answers. Uh, which could be a personal response, uh, rather than giving before giving assignment to them, we give them final product or assessment and rubric for the unit. I think we all do that, especially in, if we are in IB or any such curriculum. Uh, foster an environment that encourages risk-taking, emotional and intellectual safety. So rather than asking them the right question, maybe students say all the possible answer and uh, possible wrong answer and explain why they are wrong. Um, got them up. Uh, out and free seat and get social work is structure uh, is in structured group or, or build class discussion basically learning with others basically a noisy but structured classroom where there is a discussion there is a conversation going on and the last one i would say publishing work sense of audience first who are you making it for and then sharing it with the public also this is so important which i think we miss out a lot at times because of time and because of so many things which are happening in schools Last point for me would be, what are we doing as teachers to make our content relevant to students' lives? So I was reading a reflection of a teacher and she talks about that giving writing assignments on topic that mattered to them, I do that a lot, but I don't know how clearly I connected what they are really, what they were doing to how it could help them. For example, with something like argumentative writing, I was probably more focused on, this is how you get good grades on this rather than this is how you change someone's mind. Such a powerful statement, change someone's mind. Authentic assessment has this objective, but do we really look at it? I mean, again, when I say do we, I'm actually reflecting back and seeing how much we need to really review this. Um, when, so for example, these examples are given in, in this particular uh, article when I was reading, it said that when students are studying the old presidential debates in English, let's say, or INS, show parallel with the current presidential elections. When you're studying bacteria, talk about all the places bacteria hang out in students' daily life. Making these kind of connections, I mean, it, I think it's so natural to us teachers and we say, oh, I'm doing this. And of course, actually we do it because this is really, really natural to us. But the point is what I think which we need to do is 
that we make sure that we add them to our lesson plan. We go back and write it there so that we know that this is what I talked about and reflect on. So what I'm talking about here is authentic and, and those connections which are, which are very, very clear, very visible, rather than something which we thought that we did it. Because we do it all the time, as I said. We do it all the time. This is out of habit. But there are conscious link which we need to create. We need to have a checklist. Okay, today I'm really going to talk about these because this is what I'm talking about in unit. This is what my children feel. So this is where I'm bringing this connection. Uh, have an authentic public end product. Again, I'm bringing in the last uh, slides point that a video, a live presentation and community service project, a website, a common class website, something that will ultimately be consumed by people outside the, your classroom. And this is something also takes care of that issue where we say that my children are not motivated, they are not interested, they are not engaged. This will definitely be uh, motivating them, those are not interested. Um, so what do we do instead of packets of worksheets? So this is something which we can look at. I'm sure again, this is not new to you. You all talk about it. Like in, within class discussion, we say gallery walk or philosophical chair or think pair share, jigsaw. Uh, some interesting maker challenges, genus R, I talked about project-based learning, service learning, um, some role plays, labs, escape rooms. So bringing in, you know, student-directed learning, self-directed learning, where children can really have uh, the choice at the same time they're learning uh, in detail, they're learning in depth. Uh, this is something which is very, very crucial. Next point, an example. So, an example where a students were asked to redesign an underutilized courtyard space on the school campus. So what they did, this is the goal, but they drafted, they revised and presented their ideas in formal presentation to their classroom. Then they met with the architect who shared their own plan and took students' suggestion. I think this would have been even interesting if the school asked them to maybe create a budget, look at the budget, look at the labor cost, look at the material was, which was used. So a task, which could be extended further, but really students were engaged in this task. Uh, I came across this sample in MISO, MISO for research. Of course, if you have heard uh, Catherine when she talked about services action and community service, she talked about this and I really, really loved it. Uh, this is for action research. So process of, you know, once you have the goal, once you have the task, how do you go deeper into it? How do you motivate your children to go further for action research? I, I really like this. So MISO stands for, M stands for media, I stands for interview, S stands for uh, survey, and O stands for observation. So basically, when you're trying to give research opportunity to your children, think of all these four options that your children look at, and then they further develop their research plan. And because then you will be able to surely say that, yeah, your children have not just a very superficial understanding of what they're doing, but more than what, what actually needed. Um, examples, few more examples, uh, of course, student-led conference community project. This is something which we did in our school. I wish I could show you the video, but I'll try and see if I can. Uh, so student-led conference community project. We all know student-led conferences, but what we did this year in our school that our community project where children work on a specific, for a specific cause and link it with their passion, something which you're really passionate about. Uh, they uh, shared it with the community. So of course they, they followed this whole process of research, goal setting, why was this goal, reaching out to the community which they were working for. But later when we shared it, especially in this whole pandemic, we tried to make it in a way where this was majorly shared with the parents and there was a, a supervisor along with them. And it was a very interesting thing. So the way they shared it and the way parents engaged in it and the questions and the feedback, it was really interesting. Uh, GSR is another one, which is also a kind of project-based learning, but of course, authenticity, authentic assessment is part of it very crucially. So where students work on their passion and for a longer time, for six to seven months, and then share the product with the, with the, with the community. Uh, I came across this in the recent workshop, which I attended on personal project, uh, this change personal project, which we are talking about. Uh, my, uh, my supervisor, uh, my, sorry, my workshop leader talked about this night of the notable this is the the task which they do this is the kind of project they do this is a self-directed project idea uh, this is basically their idea so what they do is they uh, maybe they define two or three subjects like let's say english ins or science they felt that there is a project idea coming together or there's a, there's a collaboration there's an interaction and they want to 
pick up this. So rather than having that unit as a part of the formal unit, they make it as a unit which is self-taught. Students work independently on that. So, so it is in part of the curriculum, but still it's not taught formally. So it's taught like where there are mentors, where there's a structure created by the subject teacher, they have the plan developed, they have the authentic task developed, but children work independently in their own time. They have parents mentors, they have teacher mentors, and there are formative checks in the progress. And this is again, seven to eight month project. And then they share the um, idea with the community. They share the exhibition uh, through the exhibition. Of course, there can be end product, which are different. Uh, this is something else also, I mean, when we know that we struggle to get uh, time to how do we do IDU, especially for MYP schools, interdisciplinary unit. This is something I found as a very interesting example, which we could do. Okay, so authentic assessment can include many of the following. Uh, it could be observation, it could be essays, interviews, performance tasks, exhibition, portfolio, journals, teacher created tests, rubrics, self and peer evaluation, all could be part of it. Uh, okay, this is, I find this is a, this as a interesting concept map, which I feel we, I, I follow it very, very, uh, you know, rigorously. So it talks about four areas and I'm going to talk about these four areas in detail. So when students are producing something, they, there are four elements to this authentic assessment task. So assessment as process, contextualization of the task, context is there, peer and self-evaluation and choice and flexibility. So these four areas are so crucial to authentic assessment task. Uh, this is the example which I said that I wanted to share it with you of my school, which we have finished recently. And I would say that this is something which we definitely need to, uh, we as a school need to review. So we are in the process of reviewing. So I thought I'll share it with you because this is very, very recent. So, okay. So this talks about uh, making of an eco and energy efficient house. So the title of the task is, are energy saving the answer to climate change? Statement of inquiry, those MYP school teacher are here, though they understand. The efficient, so what our statement of inquiry was efficient use of shape, space, and form lead towards understanding of human impact on the environment and thus provide sustainable design solutions. It's ATL skills, of course, you can see those strands. So what was the uh, task, authentic task? We use GRASPs here, the tool. So it says goal to provide a solution toward a sustainable future by creating a blueprint. Role, you are an architect. Audience is local community, situation, uh, students, uh, we are talking to students, so you have observed the depletion energy sources and the local community has highlighted the need for a sustainable solution for energy conservation. Purpose of blueprint, keeping in mind the mathematical specification provided and the science behind. Standard of S stands for standard of criteria as mentioned in the rubric, so criteria for this was criteria A and D for science, which is knowledge and understanding and these for reflecting on the application of the science. So this was the task. Um, now, the question is what I'm trying to ask from you now, in, I need your help. So what are the strength of this task? Uh, I would rather say that we, we focus on whatever the points I talked about, relevance and how much we are engaged in it, or is it students real world or is it our world? Uh, and all these four points of the concept map, looking at this, what do you think in terms of impact of student of this task? What do you think, what are the strengths? I will share my observations also with you uh, after that, but uh, I would really need your ideas and your uh, observation. You can put it in, maybe if you want, you can have it in the chat Will you box. put the task back on the screen? Sorry? Will you put the task back on the screen? Oh yes, yes, I'll do that. Oh, thanks. Yeah, yeah. So I really like, I think kids so much now care about um, climate change. It's such a pressing matter that it's uh, something that they are interested in. So I really like that. I wonder if you could adapt this so that it was um, them making sustainable changes or eco-environmentally eco friendly changes to their current school. So it could be that they do a project where they're gonna turf the roof of the building or they're gonna build, um, you know, flat windowsill planters for all the classrooms across the school. Like there could be other ways that they could have that direct impact 
um, yeah. in their school instead of um, role playing, or that could be like the formative, and then the summative could be doing this bigger kind of picture where they're taking their role as an architect. Yeah. Because um, then they have that very real, yeah. the real impact as well. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, I think it's cool. Yeah, this is exactly why observation also is really any any anyone else anybody want to add something to uh this on you can you can unmute yourself or you can put it in the chat box wherever you feel comfortable so which grade uh this is for this is for grade six okay so i have always struggled uh using these big words uh, uh and giving the task to the junior grades especially the I understand people talk about sustainable these days, but people not having the clarity at that stage called efficiency, for example. Mm -hmm. Efficiency as the output upon input, they mm -hmm. do not have this understanding. The second is uh, environment itself is a broad term. Right. What happens, you bring these kind of tasks, they end up doing the project, but they still do not have the fundamental understanding. Absolutely. But though you achieve you know, what you wanted to achieve, yeah. But then the keywords, if you miss those keywords explanation somehow, directly or indirectly, I've always seen uh, the challenges in the uh, in the senior years. Yeah. You're happy about the project outcome and all, but you still get back to the, uh, you need to go back to those fundamental key terms as such. No, so, absolutely. absolutely valid point. So, yeah. So go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. No, that's fine. Uh, yeah. That was it. So, yeah. So, um, this is exactly where yes yes richard yeah i think it's a really cool uh, assessment i really like it thank you for sharing i wonder if it could be made even more contextually specific if it could yeah. be made completely local and like uh, yeah. in our part of where we live this is our output this is how much our carbon footprint if that could you know to really speak to them and really make it kind of tangible and, and kind of as realistic as it could be um, and then I also just thought as a side note, I don't know how you, you, you kind of came up with this, but I really like the idea of asking the kids. And I yeah. think it's a hard skill and a hard thing to do, right? Yeah, I, absolutely. I think what you're saying is totally right. This is something rather even when I uh, was observing. So I'll share my observation also very aligned with what you're thinking. Really, absolutely valid point. Thank you for sharing. Um, uh, involving children, at, I think it's going to change uh, the entire thing about it. Greg, you want to share something? You raise your hand. Yeah. Well, I just want to, an observation I make, well, there, there are two about a task, uh, when you set up a task like this, mm -hmm. you know, the way the way it's created here, it, it doesn't just, well, it does suggest, but it, it compels you to decide what it is that you want to teach yeah. the students, you know, particularly in your explorations that you set up for them so that when it comes down to ready to do this task, yeah. they are fully prepared to do it. And they have that, uh, those, that a good conceptual understanding of what you, um, well, what you hope for, which trying to get them to build. Yeah. And I, I think the other thing is uh, in looking at, um, there's often, it is, I guess I'll put it this way. It's easy to look at this task and say, hmm, the students are gonna be uh, applying certain things. They're gonna be missing out on a lot of fundamental uh, facts and uh, basic concepts that are really important for them to learn later. Mm -hmm. But I think your, your choices in what you're gonna teach the kids in your explorations, I think can solve that problem right off the bat. So no, no, they're gonna have that. Yeah. And I'm going to teach them and they're going to know it. And then the other thing is it's, it's comparing this to a paper and pencil test where you are drilling them on concepts or facts to get these fundamentals of whatever the, 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 the subject area is. Yeah, I think it really does the kids a, a, a disservice not letting them apply what they're learning. And so I don't think it should be I don't think it needs to be seen as an either or choice, but it really should be how this, like I said, the first time suggests and compels you to teach the kids a certain set of, yeah. of content. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, absolutely. I think this is a wonderful point. Uh, uh, Pallavi has talked about that four ATL skills are recommended for keeping this one. Do we really want to have four skills? Yeah, important thing to review uh, that are we able to give them those opportunities or learning experiences? I think teachers did justify that. They said that, yeah, they had created those learning experiences where this was required. But, uh, but something which definitely need to be, because I feel always not going more than two strands, this is what we keep in mind. Um, but we also feel that it becomes a little difficult for children to map their own progress and set up yeah. targets for themselves or set uh, goals in that sense as well for the skills that they want to develop. So if there's too many of them on the table, um, yeah. what will the kid really focus on? Okay, so this is my observation was that maybe I think all of you kind of said almost the same thing, I guess. 
So more student choice. I felt that maybe we talk about only a net. Okay, are we giving them enough choice first when we are asking them for the end product or where is student ag agency in this one? Another thing, scope of peer and self-assessment. Was it there? Is it relevant? Is it there in the task? Is it clearly spelled out? Maybe not. Uh, formative checks, assessment process, going back to that first point, which we talked about uh, in, the, in the concept map, that where are the assessment process? What were the assessment processes in this one? Involving community maybe as a celebration of the outcome. Uh, context, I think if it really, does it really fit students need or, or maybe it does, but have we tried to change it and, and stepped in their shoes and made it more relevant to them instead of what we feel about it. Uh, this also has an opportunity to do more. I mean, of course, it could be part of services action component because there is a research related to that, but maybe a direct link that could have been another thing. I think one of you mentioned about local community involvement. So that could have been another idea which we can go ahead in this area. So this was my observation. Thanks for sharing your observation. I've made note of certain points which you talked about and those are really useful. Um, so I, I'm not going to not go, now going to focus on two more important areas and then we'll try to see if we can create something interesting together. So because if you see in the concept map, I'm going back, I'm referring to concept map again and again, and this talks about formative assessment, formative um, processes. So it really matters what we measure. So uh, so it's, it's important that we see what we really measure. Uh, because most of the time, and, and this is something again coming from my experience, and I'm not saying we all do it, but I have seen that, and I have made that mistake too, that when we construct our rubric, so rubric is not only that MYP, IB objective, or rubric summative uh, criteria. It's about, of course, we all talk about it, a formative checks, formative rubrics. But when we make our rubrics, it's so important that we focus on the central point. I have also been a teacher who has focused on the peripheral component so much while assessing. Why? Because I find those are easy to see, easy to count, easy to score. Uh, but is it really relevant? Because I know if when we go to the central point, that could be very subjective and we may not get the right point for that, but that's the crucial thing. So for example, if a student is writing an editorial, of what we assess is that it should be stylistically sophisticated, organized, it meets the length requirement, time requirement, all of that. But the important part of that editorial is that how well it, it, it is written, that's not, that's important, but the important thing more than that would be whether it was, it could persuade the reader. Did it create any emotional connection? Or did you, if this is an argument, did you win any argument when you were talking about this and you gave this particular task? So this is very crucial. W measure what really matters. Uh, this is one of the example I picked up again from, uh, I like cult of pedagogy. I don't know how many of you follow that, but I really love her work. So this was there. So uh, this particular project was on lunar cases model and it talks about creativity. So assessment objective for rubric, peer and self-evaluation were creativity, model accuracy, attractiveness, mechanics, and timeliness. And if you see uh, the model accuracy is the only one which is central, according to me, others are peripheral, more peripheral than central to the task. Changed one after says model accuracy, model functioning, uh, and scientific reasoning. If you see in all these three points, the whole focus is on how, what we really want children to do, what we really want children to learn. Not saying that peripheral is not important, it is, but centrally, this is what we need to assess. Uh, this is why single point rubrics are so crucial. And I'm moving towards single point rubric rather than having, you know, describing all different stages and okay, what four means and what three means and what two means and what one means in a particular uh, rubric, but having a one single point rubric where you have identified the areas very clearly. And then there is a scope for evidence to see evidence of children's learning. And of course, there is a, there is a option for areas for improvement. So that's where uh, going towards that is the question. I, I just want to say how much I love single point rubrics. It's, it, it, it turns an almost impossibly large, well, for me, an impossibly large task into one that's manageable. And, you know, sitting there trying to figure out and fully describe the way it's gonna, a student is going to fall short of the mark is really, I think, a tedious and an often useless exercise because right. it seems to surprise you in so many ways. 
I I know absolutely. Anyone else wants to talk about the single point rubric because I know it's something which I I even I felt that IB is also moving towards this a lot. They're talking about this, especially in personal project. The focus is a lot on this when children are creating their own success criteria. Yeah, this is uh, this is something I really loved about this this change with. I've seen some examples of some evidence of children's work, uh, and they talk about this particular thing. Interesting. Yeah. So assessment strategies, card and critique, critique protocol. So this is again I'm talking about here. How do we really provide student feedback? What are the assessment strategies? Are we really going with those written assessments, assessment feedback where we put it on the notebook because we find it easier, or we are going with different different areas, uh, different ideas? So this is something again, I feel raft could be one of the assessment strategy card, which could be used where children think of uh, in the task, they think of their role audience format topic and they comment on it or teacher comment on identifying these aspects and comment on it, whether they could really do it well or no. Uh, other strategy could be three facts in the fib. So suppose you've given them given student a source material and you have given them to read something and Students generate three true statements and one false statement, and then it is for the rest of the class share, uh, looks at it and reviews and give response. Why I'm talking about these in authentic assessment, you may feel that maybe this is not directly linked, but it is so linked to me because when you create a task, it's not just about creating the task, it's actually thinking of the entire plan in mind. It's, it's going back to, again, that concept map, that what is the process? Where is the opportunity for peer and self-assessment? What is the opportunity for me to give feedback as a teacher? Or what kind of feedback I'm giving? So that's something which I feel is very crucial here. Uh, another exercise on that activity, which is uh, detective work, where uh, teacher talks about, uh, teacher, uh, this is what something I tried and it works really well, especially for the essays or for the lab reports or, or research-based tasks. So you have, uh, students in a group group of four and you have given rather than giving them feedback written you have given them strips of paper and distribute them so this is strips of paper basically where your feedback is there and you ask children to find out which is for which particular task because there are four and they rather than looking at whose task is this and how much mark or what exactly has been the uh, personalized interaction more than that they would actually look at it as a holistic thing they would read everything they would read the feedback and try to match it and it, it really works very well in terms of the feedback strategy. Um, another thing is feedback, which is find it and fix it rather than giving them the corrected work. You indicate the mistakes, indicate the errors, and they look at the, the uh, points which are right and which are wrong. There are also teachers who ask them to create a bar chart of their mistakes, uh, errors, and correct, correct them. In fact, I have seen a particular group of teachers where they were working on this uh, interesting thing, this particular strategy, and I, I talked to them. They said that, uh, and I'm giving an example of, let's say, criteria B, science lab report uh, investigation. So what they do in the entire semester, they keep children, they ask children to keep a bar chart of their errors in that particular task, whenever that particular criteria is assessed. So children have an understanding of what mistakes they have made in that. And this is so important for the teacher to see and look at it as a pattern and really work on it and uh, uh, make that relevant and corrections uh, or, or guiding them in the right direction that works really well. Yeah, another thing to authentic assessment task, very important, very systematic, very logistic, but it's needed. So when you plan something like this, and especially if it's a longer project, it's part of a longer project, Having clearly identified your timeline, your if it's going to take a month, then what does it look like? Like in this one, if you see, there is a specific time for project launch. There's a time for lessons, lesson scaffolding activity. Work time is independent time when children are working. Critique protocol when there is a feedback, formative feedback. Uh, so lesson scaffold activity and finally panel this presentation. So when you have this, you would have clearly clarity in your mind that you know that this is what you need, these many hours. Uh, if school calendar doesn't allow you make time for this and you have uh, these days communicated already. So this is something would be really important from that perspective that it'll, it'll make it work because I know time is something which is very crucial. And we know that time, if time is not taken care or resources are not taken care, your uh, task which you're thinking is not going to work. So this is why it's important to plan out this very well in the in advance. 
uh, what is an appropriate level of voice and choice? That's something which we all struggle. So this could be, of course, this is not limited to these options, but this could be many multiple areas to this. So voice and choice, it could be an individual project. In fact, within a team product, you can actually have an individual product allowed rather than saying that everybody should do a group project. No, you should allow children. This is where I think we need to look at children's need and their, their attention span, their strengths, their limitations and allowing individual products, team product. They should choose their team members. They should have their team roles defined. They should have, of course, there can be contracts and there can be different strategies there. Uh, they could choose their own topic or subtopic they could have their own research question within the topic, within the subtopic, individuals could have their own inquiry question, further inquiry question. You could use Jigsaw. Jigsaw is so good for these kind of things, it works. So they are working in their independent groups and uh, independent groups or groups with someone else or independently and come back to their group and share what they've learned. Processes and benchmark, they define their process. Like I talked about MISO. So they know that this is the process I'm going to follow. There is a media, there has to be an interview, there has to be a survey or there has to be, of course, there is a observation, what I observe while I'm in a bus, what I'm observing, of course, bus, when I say I, all, uh, I want to go back to the school, but I'm stuck in lockdown, but yeah, whatever you're observing, that observation is so important, maybe creating time where it's beyond phone, your cell phone, and then you go and figure it out. So these are the things where children can have choice and voice. They could have an option of choosing their own audience. They could have an option of choosing their own resources. When I say that resources, maybe you could give them a variety of resources, not maybe more than, let's say, if you're seeing a particular task, there are four or five resources, ask them to have mandatory, look at two out of this. So there's a choice, but there is a, there is a scope which you have created, a boundary which you have created. So this is so crucial because voice and choice is so crucial to, again, going back to the concept or element of authentic assessment task. This is one of these aspect of uh, the uh, uh, the uh, uh, authentic assessment task when you create. Um, okay, so now uh, another thing which I wanted to share is the possible culminating products. Again, not limited to this, could be many, but it is press release, could be the end product, there could be a field report, social media, common website, a scale model, a business plan, a PSA video, a brochure, a museum exhibit, a skit, a play, and in, in an e-portfolio maybe, a student-led conference again. So there could be multiple areas where students could share their final product. Um, so yeah, these are the four aspects which I talked about and I think I've shared those four elements here. Okay, what are we looking at now? I think we have, uh, let me see. I think we have 20, 25 minutes more. So 20 minutes, okay. So I'm looking at uh, creating something together. So the driving question which we are getting into again i'm i'm not getting into the topic because that's something you have to figure out and you will uh, according to your subject area but what i want you to look at the driving question which is the starting question of the authentic assessment task which we are creating right now it is about will students understand your question which you are about to create and find it engaging is it open ended and require a complex answer so basically we are trying to say that will student learn content and skill there does it focus on the authentic problem challenge or issue? So this is something which we are working on now. So this is the general criteria of a driving question. And this is the task. Of course, poster thing you can maybe, we, we, I don't know whether we'll be able to create poster, but definitely this Padlet link is important here. So I'll share it here. Uh, give me two minutes. I'll share the Padlet link. So this is our Padlet link, or I haven't shared. Okay, this is now going. Yeah. Uh, what are we looking at? We are looking at going back to the task again. So we look at the project idea. We could use GRASP tool, up to you. You have GRASP, you have RAFT, you can use any. Uh, driving question, after project idea is identified, look at the driving question, look at the learning outcomes. What major product you think you would want to look at? and a public component added to 
that project which you're looking at. So it's something which which I talked about uh, in my uh, my school's example, which I shared. Think about that and look at this particular idea of creating one task together and share it on the Padlet link. Uh, do, should we limit this to 10 minutes? Because then we can come back and discuss something, some interesting thing which we have uh, shared. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> All right, so 10 minutes to work on this. Work on what we talked about, work on what elements I talked about, and I'll keep quiet now. Yeah, you can do it for any subjects. Yeah, for your subject, any subject, I would say maybe if you want to go back to your class, looking at next year's planning, maybe it's relevant to do it for your subject, but it's up to you. It could be an interdisciplinary project also. Yes, please, Greg, that's really useful. Yeah, I think that's fine. If you can want to share your already shared one, already created one, that would be very useful. So Greg, will you share it on Padlet only? Uh, yes, I'll find a way to trim it and- Okay, otherwise, it. yeah. Otherwise you can share it here also. That's fine. That's absolutely all right. Okay, thanks. <clears throat> Okay, so I think we should share it here. Maybe if you are more comfortable talking about it here. Yeah. Thanks for sharing this, Greg. This is interesting. Sorry, I think I'll, I'll look at it later. Maybe you'll share it right now. That would be better. Yeah. Greg, you want to talk about this assignment with us? Um, well, I can. I'm, I'm teaching um, next year um, a physics unit. I've never been all that comfortable with teaching physics. Mm -hmm. But I thought with the first unit that we had, we, we recently worked on our scope and sequence. And so this physics unit kind of fell on me to teach next year. So I was trying to do something that, well, that I, would engage me. And I had hope in turn would engage the kids. So I decided to have them make this uh, Rube Goldberg machine. And I have a, kind of have some bells and whistles in here. I want them to achieve some task. And I thought, as I was thinking about this, I, I really thought hard about the, the, the statement of inquiry and turning my conceptual understanding that I wanted to get the kids to, uh, to develop out into the world in a way. And I ended up using this, the idea of craft. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I, the global context now escapes me. I can't remember what that's in. Um, but the, uh, the, the, I wrote the statement of inquiry with that idea of craft in mind, or, but I, I end up changing to um, care and craftsmanship in my statement of inquiry. So I, I'm trying to get the kids to attend uh, like seriously and make a commitment to doing a good job on something and not just, you know, um, uh, you know, being able to answer all the questions or, you know, stay in their head and their minds to show me their work. And then I also, what, I've been, I've been burying the lead here. I'm going to have them make a Rube Goldberg machine that, that does something and have them produce a video that highlights the, um, the, the workings of it. And in so doing, talk about energy transfer, um, a little bit about simple machines. Right. Um, and uh, I could go on and on, but I, I, I can stop there. I think, oh yeah, they're going to do an, a, a video and a written report. I think it might be a little much for a nine week unit. I'm trying mm -hmm. to, I've been, my next order of business is to plan out the, uh, the nine weeks to see if I have enough work time to get for them to get this done. Because assuming we're in school, 
I'll right. need to give the time in class to work on it. But I would I would love any feedback on this. Yeah. Um, so if someone has a minute, they happy to put comments on there. I'd be thrilled. Mm -hmm. be Thanks. Best. Thank you. Thank you, Greg. <clears throat> Uh, Liz talked about make a video of you and a friend at restaurant restaurant ordering a meal. Interesting. So yeah. Okay. So driving question is how do we order a meal in Spanish? Learning outcome using vocabulary and grammatical structures related to uh, related to food in a real environment. Really interesting. Yeah. Any comments, any other feedback you have, something which you did in your school and which worked and something which you want to review, uh, it's great to share. I'm happy to share, if you like. Yeah. Thank you, Richard. Yeah. You're welcome. I was going to try and do it on Canva and do a whole kind of fancy snap, but it's quite <laughs> okay. long. Okay. Just... Um, the idea that we did was uh, creating a trailer We've been studying the Western game in language and literature. And yeah, we asked the kids to make a trailer of their own film okay. version of um, That was building on from a visual summary that I'd asked them to do previously, uh, which was like a formative. This is kind of like the next step to, to try and conceptualize and make their own trailer for the Western game. And uh, yeah, their role was actor, director, producers. Uh, the audience was obviously be kind of students of uh, people of their age. Um, yeah, and then the public component will be, we'll, we'll share it back with the kids and we have an assembly coming up and any of the best ones we're going to share in that assembly. But I guess the better thing, better way to share it would be to set up the website so that everyone can just kind of pile in whenever they like. Yeah. Uh, and the question I think is <clears throat> how much of the kids understood it? How confident are they with retelling it and being creative in that way? Because sometimes the kids struggle a little bit with with, with creativity and thinking outside the box. Yeah. Um, so I really wanted to kind of lean into that and pursue that a little bit more. And the reason we chose to do it as a video is because the kids have been doing that in drama and mm -hmm. they, they really, really enjoy filming and they really enjoy creating their own kind of short videos. So that was where we'd gone with it. Very interesting. So how did you measure the impact? I mean, later, did you look at any kind of self-evaluation or peer evaluation for that? Yeah. We're in the process of doing it now. Um, okay. So I think, I'd want to know how much they enjoyed it, how, yeah. how engaged, you know, I want it to be quite um, just, and particularly in this context, right, in COVID where they're still doing distance learning, I want to give them something that is, that is like fun and enjoyable and, and that they have the opportunity to work with other people as actors and whatever else. Um, so I think it would be that. Yeah, and then the, it's criteria um, C and D. And in criteria and D, there's one of the strands which is uh, nonverbal communication. And again, often it's difficult to assess that we take it for granted sometimes in English. So it's a good access point for that. And, and again, that um, criterion C is producing text where it looks more at the creativity and it shows engagement with the process. And that's what I've really been asking them. So I did then um, task specific rubrics and tried to break it down for, you know, almost like a success criteria, right. saying exactly what it requires and what it needs to be to be successful. Yeah, interesting. Thank you for sharing. Okay, uh, Sneha, do you want to share yours here or should I go to the Padlet? Okay. Uh, hi, Ms. Anshu. <laughs> so I was just putting it on um, Padlet okay. and um, I can share it here also, no problem. Thank you. <laughs> so the task we did recently for one of the summative assessments was uh, for our grade seven phase two students in Spanish in language and uh, language acquisition, where um, we asked the students to create a vlog to describe their homes, the activities done in each part of the house and to introduce their family members. Uh, and the driving question was, um, how do we describe our home and activities done in each part of the house in Spanish? And how do we introduce our family members in Spanish? Uh, so our learning outcome here was um, that students would be able to uh, describe their homes, talk about the activities and introduce their families using appropriate verbs and adjectives um, because we have a variety of verbs and adjectives that we can use for all of these. Um, and uh, we just finished with the task and um, I went through a couple of uh, students' work and students have used a variety of platforms. Um, they've used uh, Flipgrid, they have used uh, N number of uh, video editors uh, uh, in order to uh, carry on this uh, process. And some of the students have 
so there was a lot of uh, student uh, choice uh, here um, incorporated here and the students were given total liberty to choose however they want to do their videos so there were students who have also um, uh, used incorporated uh, means and uh, music um, and pictures so some of them have gone around their house like a typical vlog some of them have um, taken the video taken pictures and then given the voiceover so i thought this was uh, quite an activity, uh, quite a task for students to, you know, showcase their uh, ideas, their creativity, and also at the same time learn uh, from this uh, sort of an assessment. I think it worked well with the students. That's interesting. Thanks for sharing. I think you're also looking in the process of now evaluating further, isn't it? Where yeah, you yeah, get yes. impact and measure it. Yes, so we also had created rubrics for the students and we told them that these are the things that you need to keep in mind when you are um, implementing the task or when you are going to do your task and students were quite uh, intrigued by it too and they did go through it step by step. They even um, created a mind map before they started the video where they wrote down the vocabulary and they created, they use mind map creators online uh, so that they could be more creative. So yeah, yeah. students have been very tech savvy this time. <laughs> Perfect. Anyone else wants to share before we? Okay. All right. So, uh, so yeah, so these are the, yeah. Okay. Anyone? I thought, Right. So, so basically what the objective today, what I was trying to understand, I mean, with you all and reflecting on it, that how we can make deeper connection, what are the elements of authentic assessment? And when, do, when we create, what are, the, what are the different things which we need to keep in mind uh, while we are on the task? I mean, as we talked about time and resources and choice and voice, and I would say critique protocol is so important to it. Formative assessments are so important. Uh, identifying ATLs and content. Of course, when you look at ATL, basically it's the formative, basically where you get to know students' understanding. Uh, and very, very important thing here is that, are we making it relevant to our children? Are we stepping in our children's shoes and trying to make tasks which are relevant to you? Again and again, I'm, I'm going back to that particular thing. Are we really looking at only uh, how to get good grades or really having an impact on them or on the society? That should be the idea. And I know, I mean, at least I would know that I have struggled in this and I have tried to look at it and reflect on this more uh, going forward that, okay, what are the changes which needs to be done? So this is what I wanted to share. Thank you so much. Thank you guys. Thank you for attending this. Um, anything you want to suggest, any, any idea before we go, uh, most welcome. Thank you so much. I just wanted to um, jump in. I just came back from the other two sessions, but I just wanted to um, point out that all these sessions are completely volunteer led. So um, they've all put in so much time into organizing them and then obviously running them and putting themselves out there. So I've linked her LinkedIn so you could connect with her there and also endorse or write a little recommendation. So um, thank you so much for running another session for us. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for attending. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, take care. See you some other time. <laughs>